What up, y'all? We are here for our weekly manifestation oracle reading. I hope everybody is doing well. I am, I am getting past the worst of the allergies. Finally, uh, my body is starting to acclimate. Thank goodness. Um, getting a little bit caught up on the rest, so feeling spry and oh our favorite card <laughs> music for manifesting first one out to manifest rapidly think of your desire while you chant hum sing or play music this is kind of like the magic sauce because music gets you into your right brained mind, it gets your imagination flowing, it gets the creative juices flowing, but it also plays on your emotions. Music can really like uh, cue emotions uh, more so than anything else. When you look at a picture or you can look at video content and you can see imagery play out, right? And then you can hear someone telling you something and, and it can be compelling. But think about like when they add that string symphony and you catch yourself watching these dumb like spammy commercials and then but you're like so sucked in and you're about to cry uh, over the latest tongue scraper because there's that violin symphony like viral music always playing and you're like stop playing on my emotions about everything like can't I just like you know listen to an air conditioner commercial without the same music but it's like it shows it goes to show how powerful and how uh how powerful music can be to influence your feelings and it makes me feel attacked and manipulated when commercials do it. But we can use it um, intentionally for manifestation. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, when I get all like nasally from uh, <coughs> allergies or whatever, it always results in a cough. So I'm not like, I don't have the black lung. I'm not at the end of my days. <laughs> it sounds bad, but it's not. But yeah, so music, choose music that puts you in to the essence of being in the dream that you're trying to see fulfilled and made manifest, right? Uh, for me, like I love rap music and disco music because the general attitude or at least when okay so rap music in the early 2000s to probably like the 2000 i don't know 10 ish era was all about opulence i'm so fantastic i'm so great kiss my ass kind of thing after that it got a little bit more like i don't know moody at sometimes but like you there's a really big library of rap music that's people on top of the world, high as a kite, like living for, you know, living for the, I don't know, success, money, glamour, uh, power, you know, uh, disco, same. It's like opulence. It's like good mood, um, confident, right? No one's like self-deprecating in uh, disco or rap music, uh, quite the opposite. So that will get you in a state of confidence and opulence and wealth and power and fun, right? <coughs> if you want to attract love, <coughs> maybe listen to love songs and get into the mood for, <coughs> for love. <coughs> if you're trading for a rodeo, maybe listen to country music, put on some Willie Nelson, uh, that kind of thing. But definitely utilize music to manifest rapidly. Oh, I was like, I was trying to get up early this morning and I woke up just incapacitated with like terrible cramps. And so I was like, well, I have been really, really tired. And I've been like, I've had back to back. It's been like the plagues of Egypt during this whole, uh, this whole Passover, which is today is the culmination of Passover. 
This marks the day that Moses split the Red Sea and the Israelites walked through away from their past and into their future. So yeah, but during all of this, I have had one like ailment or like had to pull all nighters and haven't had a lot of rest. So I was like, oh, well, I'll just go back to sleep for about an hour <coughs> until this medicine kicks in and just give myself some rest. And that is when someone started banging on my door. It was like the new inspection man and he had come to like change the air filters and stuff. I'm like, I just want to rest. So it's never going to happen. Uh, Self-employment. You're a born entrepreneur and your business is surrounded by magical opportunities. So if you are a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you are, you know, running a startup company, it is like touch and go every day. Some days you're on top of the world. Some days you feel like the biggest pariah and the greatest failure that ever lived. Uh, some days you can't imagine giving up and some days all that's all you want to do. And so to me, seeing this card gives us a lot of self-assurance that if you are in a situation where you have your own business or your own brand or you're trying to invent something, just know that you're not in it alone, that anyone who's ever taken on an endeavor like that feels like they're in over their head. And sometimes they feel like they're an absolute failure and sometimes they feel victorious and on top of the world, but it's something that everyone feels and it's, it's cyclical. So if you're at the point where you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling at the end of my rope, I don't know if I can go on any further, just know that you're like you're in the right place. You're doing the right thing. Recenter your focus on like what it is that you're excited about sharing with mankind and with the world. And try to shift your focus away from when is the return coming? Because that is usually what starts to become draining and daunting and it leaks your energy and it leaks your mojo. So focus on how you are serving, how you are sharing, um, the way people are going to be excited and helped and um, whatever it is by your product, they're going to be, they're going to love it, right? So put yourself in that position, you know, imagine that and get into the excitement and, and just remember like who and why you are doing this to begin with. And try not to let that cart get ahead of the horse. Don't, uh, don't forget that part of you probably wanted to be an entrepreneur or a business per owner or person so that you didn't feel enslaved to the man. So that you have some sort of independence or freedom or so that you, know, you have carved out your own thing in this world. And so, you know, just reconnecting with that sense helps you put things into perspective and it might also help you um, manage your expectations over yourself. It's like when we have an employer and we're under their watchful eye and we're, you know, accountable to them. It's like, it's so much easier and you can kind of relax because you don't have to feel so hyper vigilant. You know, you know what time you're expected to be at work and what time it's like expected that you're going to leave. You know, you have your, your days off during the week and that's when you, you know, unplug for the most part. And you know that your check's going to be there and things are going to get taken care of. And, you know, all of the tasks are delegated and, and there's, you know, division of labor and it's all, it's all running itself, right? Or someone else's or, or teams of people are helping. But when it's all up to you, it's all up to you <laughs> and it's hard to give yourself the mercy of time to rest and replenish and it is absolutely vital that you do that or else you will burn out you will become enslaved to yourself right so remind yourself like hey if you're driving yourself too hard just remember why you did this in the first place and the kind of life that you hoped to build around it and, and don't forget to give yourself a little bit of breathing room and be realistic and do things sustainably. You're a born entrepreneur and your business is surrounded by entre uh, magical opportunities. So don't doubt yourself. Um, don't let self-doubt creep in. 
just feel confident that as long as you keep taking consistent steps and you keep, you know, giving yourself honest evaluations and tweaking and editing as needed, then, you know, the, the needle should be ticking onward and upward. All right. And then we have a new moon in Taurus coming up, which is really great because Taurus is the earth sign um, that it's the first of the earth signs. It's super st stable. And so it makes me think of planting seeds or building things that have long-term, um, like uh, long-term stability uh, something that will be long lasting and something that will be of high value. So the things that we are thinking about now, it's like by next week, like we, you know, we've got this Taurus new moon. That's going to be great for planting seeds and intentions, um, in this new, this new cycle we find ourselves in and seeds that will be, that, can, that have the potential to be well planted and grow something that can be very stable, secure, and uh, long lasting. So, all right, what else do we need to know about this week? Break free, try different ventures and experiences as a way to grow and learn. So I believe that we got this last week and it was just encouraging us to not get too, uh, too pigeonholed or don't get tunnel vision. Uh, give yourself room to try different things, different methods, different brands um, of like, say you have like materials that you're using. Don't be afraid to try a couple of different ones uh, before you settle on um, the one that you're going to be using consistently, right? You want to make sure that you've tested uh, to see and, and done some troubleshooting to see how everything's going to work and play together. Um, also, this is a good way to inspire your creativity and to feed that part of your mind that comes up with ideas, right? Because the more experience you have with different things, the more, um, the more wisdom you have. And when, you know, situations and obstacles and challenges come up, it's like you have a whole lexicon and library of knowledge to pull from oh, I seem to remember reading about this or like learning about this recently. And I think that could be a solution, you know? So don't be afraid to always be um, an active and enthusiastic student trying new things. Don't get too stuck in a routine. Maybe you need to try to switch things up a little bit and see how that works for you. Morning affirmations. Say positive affirmations each morning to open up the gates of manifestation. Now, the morning is the seed level of the day, and our consciousness in the morning flavors the entire day ahead of us. This is one of the secrets we learn in Kabbalah. And so, what I like to do is a kosher hand washing upon first awakening. It's suggested that you do this before you touch your face or your phone or like rub your eyes or anything like that. Um, and this is because a negative energy sits on your hands as you sleep. And so your hands um, need to be cleansed upon waking because if that energy is still on your hands and you start touching your face, <coughs> you start going about your day, that's what causes irrit irritability. And it's this negative energy that's sort of there as like um, sort of like ant bait to spread out and kind of like ruin your day from the start. It's something that the, um, the feminine uh, opponent does um, as her trickery. So a kosher hand washing will consist of this. You will have a container of water. You don't want to wash your hands out of the tap. It needs to come from a vessel, right? Light in the vessel. The water represents the light and the water is going to purify Water is a very powerful element and substance. It it gives um, it it can serve as a spiritual purification tool, even as a physical tool itself. So um, you will get a container of water. I I like to use what like my leftover water that's been on the nightstand. I mean, nobody ever said you couldn't, right? 
So you take your right hand, which is the masculine hand, which is the hand of sharing, and you're going to say the Tetragrammatron as you do this which is the, um, the four letter name of God. And this is the most highest unpronounceable name. It's not one of like the Jehovah this or that's, um, it's, or Adonai or those names that you can actually pronounce. This is four Hebrew letters that it's thought that they might spell out Jehovah, but it's not guaranteed because you can't, uh, decipher what the vowels are. So just a little, like, this is the unnameable, like, unpronounceable name of God. That's the Tetragrammatron. So you will say the letters of those, uh, of this name. So you'll take the water uh, container from your right hand and pour it first onto your left. And you'll say, yud He, And then you'll switch hands. And you'll go, vav He. So this is a he, like a, like a, like with a he, okay. So yud he, vav he. And you'll do three repetitions of two splashes, yud he, vav he. Yud he, vav he. Yud he, vav he. Dry. That's a kosher hand washing. So that will do, that will be like a spiritual cleansing. That will immediately be a ritual where you can just remind yourself, oh, I want to get my consciousness in the right place before I start my day. What is even more powerful than that is if you can say um, a prayer of thanks to the creator. Thank you. Um, blessed are you creator of all for restoring, fully restoring my soul to me. Because remember our soul goes up to the upper realms and meets with the council and we have kind of a, a play by play. Uh, we go over the day and see how we did kind of thing. So yes, we have our, our soul comes back to us by morning. So we thank, uh, the creator for fully restoring our soul. And then if you can think about like things that you're grateful for, uh, when I'm at the top of my game, I like to have this as a ritual that I write out in my day planner or journal, like three things that I am really grateful for and why, and write in language that talks about why the things, why you're grateful for the things, like how they make you feel, right? Like, oh, um, you know, it can be so simple. Like I'm so grateful for my warm bed you know, because I, it gives me a place to rest and not everyone has one. You know, I'm so grateful for a hot shower because the days that your hot water is messed with and you don't get that hot shower and you realize that there are people in the world who don't have hot water. They don't have running water. They don't get a shower at all. You know, it's like, oh, wow. Like I'm grateful for that. Um, and those are simple things you can be grateful for every day. When I look out my window, my peony is in bloom right now, and it's a deep burgundy uh, fuchsia colored blooms, and they are so vivid, and I'm so grateful for those. And so when you get yourself in that feeling state, it's very powerful. Um, the gr gratitude is a very high vibrational emotion. So if you can think about things that you love and that you're grateful for in the morning, it's like your consciousness is suddenly set to like the highest vibration it can be set to. Um, and then after that, I like to follow with my rituals and prayers and all of that and my daily like Bible study. But um, just getting that mindset straight from the, from the get-go is great. And then the kosher hand washing, it's kind of like that official start of the day where you're just like, okay, all right, here we are. It's, it, it kind of gives your mind something to anchor onto uh, instead of just getting up and like without any kind of consciousness or intention, just starting to go in and, uh, you know, look at your messages and go about your day and then like start getting, getting sucked into things without having first centered yourself and set the intention of how you want to feel during the day. Let's get one more card. And so, yeah, saying out loud, you know, some positive affirmations in the morning about how you want your day to go or, you know, your purpose, your sense of purpose within the day is always powerful. 
Let's get one more card for this week. Which is this? Ooh, alchemy. You have the Midas touch right now and every project you begin turns to gold. So yeah, you guys, this week, it's, you know, feel encouraged about your dreams and your business and your brands. You know, uh, you, you're a born entrepreneur. You have a business that offers others something of value and worth. So don't feel discouraged if you get tired or you feel like you're on an emotional roller coaster. You're not alone. You'd be in good company. Keep believing in yourself. Don't give up, keep striving. And when you feel drained, just remember to shift your consciousness back into that sense of creation and sharing and excitement rather than worrying about the return on investment. Because that return on investment worry is very draining. It lowers your vibration. It leaks energy out of your aura. So just try to shift that consciousness back to gratitude, sharing, and all the reasons why the greater sense of purpose that's tied into this goal. Listen to music for manifesting. Pick out music that puts you in the vibration of what you hope to achieve and the vibe of like the life that you want to feel like you're already living in. And let your emotions get stirred while you are imagining and planning. Break free. Don't get stuck in uh, the same old cycle. Don't get stuck in the same old practices or the same old approaches. Um, take advantage of experimenting and trying new things, right? I tell myself so many times, like, I need to um, mix up my hashtags or try new hashtags for YouTube. And it's one of those things where it's just like it's put last on the list, right? And you're like, oh. And so then you start, like, using the same ones over and over, right? That's just some small example of how... We can accidentally get stuck on something and keep doing the same thing over and over again. And maybe if we switched it up a little bit, we could have drastic results, like drastically different results. You just never know. So try some new things. Try taking different routes. Go to a different store. Mix it up a little bit. And either way, that'll get your creative juices flowing. You'll feel a little bit more adventurous. But there might be like something like serendipitous hidden somewhere for you. Maybe you stumble upon some information. Maybe you stumble upon like a better way of doing things or you meet a great collaborator or someone who's going to play a pivotal role. Uh, so maybe you, you cross paths with some amazing resource or tool that you didn't know that you needed, right? But either way, don't get stuck in your ways. Try new things and try to experiment and change things up a bit and switch it around. Morning affirmations. Say positive affirmations each morning to open up the gates of manifestation. So set that consciousness from the beginning. And as much as you can, declare out loud your prayers to the creator. And right now we are surrounded by like the, like just magical energy and raw potential that needs to be directed into something. When Passover has been happening all week, like we have been exposed to this heightened quality of the light of the creator. It's like our batteries have been being charged, like out of our awareness, but with like super juice. And so this is like we're gathering all of this potential and it's storing, but it's going to need to be channeled into something with some intention. So remember that, you know, we have all of this like potential up in the air all around us right now that we're, we're, we're bringing in and we're channeling through. So don't, uh, don't forget about it. Don't sleep on that. You have the Midas touch right now and every project you begin turns to gold. Now, after the Omar, there's like, I think a 40 day period of challenges where our soul is challenged in order to earn the light that we were just given through Passover. That way we can integrate it and ground it without it becoming chaos, right? Because if you have all this pent up potential and all this powerful energy and this raw creation force, it's just swirling and whirling all over the place. And so if it's not channeled into something or earned or 
are anchored in and grounded, it's going to create, it's going to wreak havoc and it's going to create chaos. So just know if you're challenged over the next 40 days, remember that that's normal and that it's actually a favor to us because it's, it's the way it's the, it's the vehicle through which we are grounding in all of the blessings that we have just received through Passover. You might remember in during the fall, during Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, we were then followed up by the Sukkot, which was eight days of every level of our soul being challenged because we had just attained that new soul. So our new soul, the new light, had to be earned and grounded and embodied through challenges that corresponded with that part of the soul. Same thing with the Omar. This is just the period that follows uh, Passover. And so this is the way we get to ground um, and anchor in all of that growth and transformation. So don't be discouraged by challenges. It's just normal this time of year, <laughs> which we've just come out of eclipse season and Mercury retrograde. So when you count in with all of the Hebrew holidays, we might have like two or three days that aren't challenging. Oh, all right, you guys. Well, that is all for tonight. I cannot wait to go take a hot shower. I'm so grateful for that. I'm going to be grateful for my hot dinner and my warm, comfy bed. And I hope that you guys have the same to look forward to. And I will see y'all tomorrow for our weekly alchemy message where we take a look at our spiritual assignments and unpack the process. All right, y'all. Ciao.